This is a phone. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. This, this is a phone. Nope. Kidding again. This is a phone. Nope. Kidding one more time. Th these are all tablets. This is my phone. Good day, QTubers. Today we are going to do a tutorial on the Android app called Backcountry Navigator. I've been asked by a few subscribers to do a tutorial video on how to use this application. So let's get started. Okay, so first off, you probably figured out that you don't actually need a phone. All you need is a decommissioned phone or a tablet, which basically if your phone is decommissioned and it's not on a cellular plan, it's just a tablet. But you do need an Android phone because this app is only available in the Google Play Store. It's not available for iPhones yet. This will only work for you if you have an Android tablet. Okay, so this is the phone I use when I'm out quadding as my GPS unit. This is Backcountry Navigator app. This area here with all these lines and waypoints, this is the main part of Nisbet that we've ridden in so extensively. The blue lines are our tracks and uh, these are just waypoints. You can choose you know, what your waypoint looks like. Uh, you can pick the color of your, your track. When you first open up the app, it'll take you to the last place that you were looking at if you have the settings set for that. If not, it'll take you to the place that you are currently at. But what happens in that instance is that it automatically uh, switches into GPS mode. It turns on the GPS. And when I'm using it at, at home and fixing up waypoints and stuff like that, I don't want it to do that. So I have it set to come on to the last spot that I opened it up on. When I'm out riding and I first turn it on or pull up, open up the app, I get this. The next thing I do is go up to my uh, satellite button here and select my location. It takes, a, I don't know, probably 30 seconds or so and then it, it grabs your location and then I click on record a track. Again, you don't need a cellular plan or data, Wi-Fi, anything to use this when you're out in the field. All you need is satellite communication. It works exactly the same as a GPS unit that is made by Garmin, etc. The nice thing about this is that the screen is easier to work with and it's a it's just a better screen obviously because I mean these phones there's a lot better technology in these phones than there is in a uh, Garmin screen Okay, I'm new at this uh, tutorial video stuff, so I'm going to be like jumping around from this spot to the next spot. So right off the bat, I'll have to apologize for being all over the map. Get it? Maps. There's several different maps to choose from. So this icon here, and then you go to more map sources. And you can see that there are there's different worldwide maps maps for US, Canada, Europe, United Kingdom, Northern Europe, Central Europe, Australia, New Zealand, East Asia, Latin America, legacy maps. Oh, those are old maps. I've never even seen those. A lot of these I've never looked at. I have no idea what they what they look like, but I know that the one I use I'll go into Canada. The one I use is called Canada Toporama maps and the reason I use it is it just seems to be the most accurate when it comes to um, topographical information. 16 USA topographical map. Well, that's cool. Cal Topo, USA Topo, Cal Topo, I'm assuming that's California. Acuterra Hybrid, National Map Imagery. Alaska, U.S. Forest Service, that's a handy one to have. But there are other maps that you can use. So if you're on vacation and you need like a street map, worldwide, Bing World Street Maps. Okay, so this one is obviously going to give you a map that looks more like Google Maps. 
Anyway, I think you got the point. There's a ton of different maps to choose from. Oh, I should mention, uh, this app is available free. However, it's limited in what it can do. It'll still track, and you can put a few waypoints on and stuff, but um, there's also advertising on the screen. So the paid version is about $15 Canadian. So whatever that works out to an American, 11 bucks or something like that. So uh, if you're interested, that's what you're gonna, that's what you're getting. So let's get started with uh, finding our uh, GPS location. Let's pretend I'm out on the trails here. We're just about getting ready to start. So I click on my location. I think you can see it's saying acquiring GPS location. Ensure a view of sky. Okay, well here, let's walk out a little further. I mean, I'm just out in my backyard. So when this thing clicks in, it should automatically pull me right into where my backyard is. Hopefully my neighbors don't see me out here with my helmet on, staring at my cell phone. Okay, so there we go. It's now uh, clicked into the spot where I, my current location is. And I'm gonna zoom in on that. There you go, it's, we're at Q's place and that's the backyard of Q's place. I've zoomed in quite a ways, which I wouldn't normally zoom in this close when I'm on the trail because I want to see what's coming up. Oh, it zoomed out a little bit on me. Okay, so next step is record a track. I usually just hit start recording because I, I like to record it all in the same place. Uh, you can have several different maps, so if you if you have a map for ATVing or if you have a map for, for sledding in the mountains or just for hiking, you can have different uh, map locations. So, um, as I'm walking, now I'm not sure, this might be actually too, let's try zooming in here. No, it won't zoom anymore. So, it might be too far, oh, here we go, yeah, so there we go, it's recording a track. So, I'm walking around the other side of my garage. Oh my god, I hope people don't see me. If my neighbors are looking out their back windows, they're going to think, what is he doing now? He's a whack job. All right, so I'm walking around my garage. Oh, there goes a rabbit. Holy geez, scared the crap out of me. Why do I have rabbits in my backyard? I'm in the middle of a city. And there we go. I've just done the circle around my back, around my garage. So that's the tracking. My trip is over, so I'm gonna now stop using GPS. It does use up um, more battery when you're using GPS and and when you're tracking uh, but if you don't keep the screen on your battery should last all day with this thing running uh, i know i do with my phone i just keep it in my pocket i usually have about two of these devices running um, these tracking devices running at one time one in my pocket that's on my phone and then the one that i'm staring at that's sitting on the top of my display panel on my atv so the one in my pocket obviously isn't going to take up as much battery power because the screen's not left on. There's an option to leave the screen on while you're using it or to turn it off. And while I'm using it on my bike, staring at it in front of me, I like to have it on so I can see what's coming up. If there's any tracks or trails coming up, approximately how far we are to the lakes, the name of the lakes, if there's a creek coming, etc, etc. But my battery would definitely not last all day. In fact, it would die out probably in an hour. So what I've done is wired in a hard wire in from my uh, 12 volt source for my ATV and a line that goes straight into my phone. Okay, so we're back at the truck. I don't need my GPS anymore. I'm gonna hit the uh, stop track recording and stop using GPS. That'll save power and it won't track me going all the way back to wherever I'm going. At any time, we could check the stats on our uh, our current track and location by pulling this little uh, compass up and scrolling, scrolling through the different bits of information they have here. So our total distance was 36.12 meters. And I have to tell you, this thing is really, really accurate. When I take it and put it on Google Earth, these things are sitting exactly in the spot like where we were traveling. So if we stop at a, a cabin and I circle the cabin, the track doesn't go through the cabin. It 
actually circled around the cabin so it's very very accurate and I think you can set the accuracy on this thing to lay down more waypoints and then the more waypoints you're laying down as you're traveling as you're tracking of course the more accurate it's going to be. We can also take a look at our previous tracks and waypoints by uh, going into this menu up here top left corner list tracks and waypoints these are all my waypoints and I've got it set to come up to the closest waypoint that my map is on at the at, at this point here's the track that we just recorded I'm gonna select that now the track color you can also change I've got it as dark blue but you can put it at whatever color you want and that would be your uh, default color uh, or, or you can change it right now just by picking a color and you can you can name this track whatever you want so if you were on a specific trip uh, let's say you went to Colorado day one so you could you could put the date in or just Colorado day one however you want now just for the waypoints here you can you can create a waypoint uh, when you're on the map and once you've got the waypoint created there's different symbols that you can use it'll take a while for this to load there you go okay so there's different there's a ton of different symbols that you can use and you can select whichever one you want for your for your waypoint um, when you're at that waypoint you can take a picture of that spot to remind you what it looks like and it'll save it so whenever you are op whenever you open this waypoint up you can look at a picture you can even record audio of that of that spot if you want so you have a little recording and then you can look at that and say hey here's the spot we found when we were out quoting to create a waypoint let's see I'll just take my my cursor over to the spot in the map this is the uh, Regina Airport so let's set a waypoint you can use this bottom on the right hand side here it's the little waypoint button and you can just touch that or you can hold your finger on the screen I like touching the button and simply because sometimes your spot will move if you put your finger on the screen so touch the button mark a waypoint you can name it whatever you want you can set your your symbol however you want and then you just hit save if you want to go back at that waypoint and have a look at it of course you go up to the top left hand corner of the screen click on list tracks and waypoints and there it is right there and I think I want to rename that to Regina Airport and I want to change the symbol so here's the airport symbol and then I hit save there we go saved okay here's something I should explain to you right now my Wi-Fi is turned off and so I'm not gonna be able to zoom in on certain map locations because I don't have that area downloaded yet before you go into an area without Wi-Fi or data you need to download that area so that the map is downloaded into your tablet and how you do that is uh, this little icon here just tap that go down to select areas for download and then you just grab whatever your area that you want and you click on download and you hit continue download and you can cache it to this map or another map that you you're using this thing has a pretty decent compass on it now you have to be away from electronical devices so uh, I always usually walk away from my quad when I when I if I'm gonna use this compass but you can select the compass screen and it's actually pretty good I'm into my basement right now and this thing is is working really well that is pretty as far as I know that is dead on north the settings now there's a thousand different settings of course and uh, your display options your GPS options I mean just the list goes on and on right and you're just gonna have to go through those and have a look at them to see how you want it set 
And if you're not sure, when you first buy this app and you turn it on, it's going to bring up suggestions or tips for you. And you can go through that and it's a tutorial so you'll be able to learn about the application a little bit better. Uh, so every time you go into something new, it'll bring up a tip unless you say turn tip uh, thing off, right? I'll show you now how to import or export your tracks. So top right corner, top left corner, sorry, is the menu button. Um, we're going to go into list tracks and waypoints. Select the track. Top right hand corner is the drop down list. Select export. You can select the type of file, so it could be a GPX file, a KML, or a KMZ. Those are the files that uh, Google Earth uses. We're going to send it as a GPX. And then you just basically click export. Oh, invalid name. Let's try this one. So it's that fast, exporting is complete. It's now taken it and put it into a separate file on your tablet. And you can share that file without having to look for it in the file. It shows you the file that it's put it in, but you can share it without having to go and retrieve it just by clicking on the share file button. And it knows that, it, it's, that this is the one that you want to share right now. So you can select it, you can send it via email. There's Gmail there. Uh, you can throw it into your Dropbox, your Drive, or you can Bluetooth it. So if I want to Bluetooth it to my phone or to one of my other tablets, click on Bluetooth. Okay, and I select the phone that I want to send it to or the tablet that I want to send it to. And then I get notification on the other tablet that I have a file being transferred from, and I can hit Accept. It downloads. I click on File Received, and it automatically opens up Backcountry Navigator, and I hit Start Import, and it's done. Okay, so that's about it for all the main features and options that you have on this thing. I don't want to get too deep into this because there's a lot that you can do with this with this app with Backcountry Navigator and it would take it'd be an awful long video if I showed you everything but this will get you started it's the basics and um, if you're interested in buying this app or if you've been thinking about it now you know a little bit more and hopefully this will help your decision on whether you want to purchase it or not if you have any questions you can certainly ask them in the comments uh, I'd be happy to try and help you out anyway that's it hope you enjoyed the video Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.